Okay, uh, and we're live on Facebook. Hi, Faisan, how are you? I'm good, Negin. How are you? Good, good. Um, welcome to TES Spotlight event. Uh, we are here at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will wait a little bit for some of our viewers to join us on Facebook. Uh, I'll be checking our link to make sure that we are live on Facebook, indeed. And here we go. Okay. So uh, for TES Spotlight events, we usually uh, feature some of our entrepreneur friends, uh, Canadian entrepreneur friends, and we're happy to be here with Faisan Yusuf today, who is the founder of Malkri Footwear Limited. And uh, so what they do is they manufacture shoes that are sustainable and they're made out of materials that uh, such as cactus or recycled tires. So we're really happy to be hosting you today, Fazan. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your company yourself. We want to hear it from you. Yeah, thank you, Nagin, for the introduction. And yeah, I'm glad to be here. Um, I've watched a couple of, uh, you know, these uh, spotlight events and they're a great tool to, you know, um, like make other group members aware of, uh, you know, uh, people running their business, their challenges. Uh, as for me, uh, yeah, as you said, uh, the company I founded was Malkri Footwear. I was thinking about the idea in 2018. The pandemic for forced my hand and started working on it full time seriously in 2019. Uh, we make shoe. The idea began to make shoes out of recycled tires, and then it evolved. And you know, we did a Kickstarter. We are almost at the end of it. A week left. And we are making sneakers and boots out of uh, cactus leather and hemp canvas. And uh, the outsoles, uh, you know, they have uh, recycled tires. Like they're made out of 100% recycled tires. And so, they're made in Mexico. And they're made in Mexico. That's great. I, I was going to ask you, we don't have many cactuses in Canada. So where where is all of that uh, product coming from? Where <laughs> all the material coming from? <laughs> That's great. Okay. Um, so what are, the, what are some of the challenges that you faced before you even thought of this? Like what made you want to go into uh, creating your own business? So uh, I came to Canada in late 2018. So it's almost three years now with my wife. And then my background is entrepreneurial as in my grandfather founded. I'm from Pakistan originally. My grandfather, mm -hmm. he founded uh, one of the biggest station, stationary companies in Pakistan. So we make pens, pencils, etc. So I, like after I graduated college, I uh, uh, did my master's from the UK, came back and then I joined the business. So it was all about, you know, uh, finding different ways for the company to make money. And then one of the courses was um, like uh, setting up a food division. So we mm -hmm. from stationary, we went to biscuits and I was in charge of that operation you know, setting everything up, coordinating between suppliers in China, Pakistan, and all of that. So that's where my passion for creating products grew because, you know, like running a biscuit factory, I could basically tell them to pour chocolate flavor and, you know, make a chocolate biscuit, eat it, gain weight, <laughs> and all of that. Um, so when I came to Canada, you know, I started like any other immigrant, you know, applied for jobs here and there. And then one of my fir and during one of my first jobs at UPS, I was showing, you know, the shoes from Pakistan. Uh, so there's this sandal with a recycled, uh, with a tire, with a tire outsole. Do you know what my colleagues there, uh, like a Canadian from Stony Creek? So he was very excited. He loved the concept, the unique idea. So that seed sort of planted in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I thought, okay, I'll bring, you know, that particular sandal to Canada. And then that's how the idea started. That's how the name was born, Malkri Footwear. Malkri in a language in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Pushto, it means um, welcome. So that's how the name originated. And then the idea originated to make shoes out of recycled tires. So I couldn't find any. And then over time, I came to realize that no, for the Canadian market, I need to do, um, you know, stuff that people here wear, like sneakers, boots, what was in fashion and what was in line with the climate. So yeah. that, that's how the idea sort of started. And in 2019, uh, sorry, 2020, um, you know, when the pandemic hit, I started seriously searching for suppliers and everything. That's great. I, I'm just sharing my screen right now. I want to test it. Um, 
are you able to see what I'm seeing on the screen right now? Yes. Okay, great. So I just wanted to show off your Kickstarter website. It's called, uh, I know you sent me the link. It was malkriefootwear.com. Yeah, it automatically redirects you to the Kickstarter yes. page. <laughs> yes. So you've got quite a setup here. Uh, we have all the information we need uh, about the product itself. And you even uh, you even did a video for uh, for the shoes. So, and, and these are the shoes, right? So yeah, these are the hemp sneakers. These are the hemp ones. Okay. And these? These are the ones yeah. from Cactus Leather that basically, you know, everyone stops mm -hmm. because they grab attention. Like um, leather they made out of cactus. Nice when they're, they're fashionable. That's nicely yeah. done. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and uh, I just want to show the video that you had made up here. Uh, so let's get right into that. We are Malkri Footwear, and we make shoes out of modern, environmentally friendly materials. With these two eco-conscious super materials, we've created a line of awesome footwear that you can wear all day, any day, and have you looking and feeling damn good too. You can choose our chukka boot made with extra strength cactus leather and a recycled tire rubber outsole for a dressier and smarter look. If super formal isn't your thing, go with our white minimalist sneakers, also made with extra strength cactus leather, cork insole, and a natural rubber outsole for a smart, casual, trendy look. If you want to go full casual, our black hemp sneaker is here to save the day and the planet with its recycled tire outsole and cork insole. Take these everywhere you go. Style them with shorts or jeans. It's up to you. Right about now, you're saying, I've got shoes. Why should I get something with hemp or cactus? The reality is that the processes used to get leather and regular cotton are extremely damaging to the environment. And the plastic vegan options use a 100% plastic for their shoes, which basically negates the environmental part. In All right. So, wow, that's... That's a really great video. Um, how did you manage? How did you manage to get that together? Put that together. Well, it was a it was a challenge. Um, when I, <laughs> you know, initially, like we were, when it was decided that okay, I was going to do a Kickstarter for uh, you know um, raising money for you know my shoes for my business. So one of the most important uh, aspects in like uh, on on a Kickstarter campaign is the video because that's the first thing people click on, and you know they make that one second snap judgment. So it has to be good. So, you know, when I was uh, looking at, um, when I was looking at uh, people, you know, to shoot my video, obviously I had um, like the samples and everything uh, mm -hmm. made from Mexico shipped to me. And then, you know, I was looking at people to make the video locally. People were charging me, uh, they were saying $10,000, like the top agency, $10,000 for one minute to get all of their equipment and shoot the video. And obviously, yeah. I didn't have that kind of money because otherwise, I wouldn't be doing a Kickstarter, right? I don't think um, anybody does at that point <laughs> in their business, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. what did you end up doing then? So, honestly, I didn't know what to do at that point. And then, I and then for um, like marketing and awareness purposes, I I've joined a lot of uh, groups related to sustainability. And there, I saw this photographer, uh, videographer based in Thailand. Uh, she posted, you know, that she was interested in working with sustainable brands. So I clicked on her profile, liked her work. Then, you know, I, we got talking and, you know, I, 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 we shot the video for 10% of what people were quoting here locally. I wow. shipped all of the samples to her, selected the models, you know, and then that's how we ended up doing the uh, video and then photography as well. Wow. Uh, I think it's quite an impactful video. Uh, so good for you for doing that. Um, let me stop sharing here. Okay. And we're back. All right. So, so we have talked about your Kickstarter a little bit. Uh, and you, you said you have about a week left of it. Yes. A week to go. Seven days to okay. go till the campaign ends. Okay. So for anybody who wants to, uh, support Faisan, uh, please go uh, to Malkri. It's www.malkrifootwear.com and support him on the Kickstarter. Um, all right. So now I want to 
talk to you a little bit more about the logistics of the business and like the pricing and all of that. So um, first and foremost, have you looked into the manufacturing part of the product? Because you don't essentially have a product yet, right? I, like you- I do, actually. I have uh, like the prototypes are all 100% done and final. Like what okay, you see in the video is the actual product. And um, I've had the product since November and, you know, I've been testing it out myself because I wanted to see the performance of cactus leather myself, like plant-based you okay. know, material that looks and feels like leather. So mm-hmm. I actually have them right here. So okay. tested in the, you know, tested in the, like, this has been through one winter. So it looks and feels like real leather. And yeah. the, the outsole here, this is recycled, made out of recycled tires, which has obviously been processed. So... Like I uh, contacted an agency, like a factory in Mexico that, you know, decided that agreed to work with me. Yes. And that's how I can, you know, uh, but there was some back and forth, multiple iterations. And that's how I figured out the manufacturing. I've, you know, I've been in touch with the factory. We've got, uh, you know, sort of an agreement where, you know, when starting out, they can accept, um, you know, a smaller MOQ minimum order quantity. And mm-hmm. then we can grow it together. So that's how, that's how the, I figured out the logistics. So how much would be the minimum uh, quantity that you would have to order? So the minimum quantity that I'd have to order would be 250 pairs. And okay. right now on my Kickstarter, it's uh, I have about 90 backers and around 120 pairs. But mm-hmm. then the minimum order quantity is based on the price, like the unit price, the manufacturing price. So mm-hmm. that's uh, that was my goal, which was five thousand mm-hmm, dollars. Mm-hmm. So I do satisfy. And so I'm in a position to order like three times that right now. That's great. That's great news. All right. Um, so so you do have a product. You have the prototype. You don't necessarily have the shipment yet. Um, how do you find like how do you promote the product elsewhere? Like I know you have the Kickstarter going but you want to create a buzz essentially before you have the product at hand like before you have your first shipment ideally right so have you reached out to influencers how has that worked out for you i do so the first thing um so i love shoes as well so uh, i love running so i love shoes so i i used to follow a lot of youtubers that do review influencers that do review shoes so what i did was initially when i uh was you know uh, came up with the idea to make you know sneakers i looked at what um the luxury brands were doing brands such as all birds fessy which is a local canadian brand you know uh, founded in mm-hmm. vancouver they do waterproof sneakers um thursday boots so all of them so what I, I i saw their styles then i reached out to influencers asked them you know struck up a conversation with them established a relationship with them and asked them to follow my page so if so uh, if somebody goes to my page and uh, you know clicks on the followers they'll see like four uh, influencers who do follow my page so the relationship is there the biggest challenge is you know uh, of course the in- influencers also have a credibility to maintain right so they so i so they can't review my product unless i'm selling it right so so they have agreed to you know you know, you know review the products and everything but then the, the the precondition is that I, you know, have to, like, if they uh, make a video and then their followers would be able to order it right away, which is not the case right now because I'm raising money to buy inventory, right? Yes, that's true. Um, so so in, it's been difficult for you, I guess, in the sense that you can't really get product reviews right now. No, right? I can't get product reviews. It's all about, you know... Um, like maintaining a community uh, like on Instagram, you see like people with lifestyle, uh, like uh, my shoes uh, during lifestyle shots. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, you know, worked up, uh, got got people following me. And that's like creating that buzz you talked about, of course, on a much smaller budget than, you know, uh, companies who are actually operating bigger brands. So that's how I created the buzz. buzz. So So you're doing all of this by yourself or do you have anyone helping you out right now? I do this all of by by myself, and then initially my wife helped me out with the photography, and then um, you know I uh, saved up a little bit of money. I uh, invested that in good photography, and like the, I think the pictures speak for themselves. 
Oh yeah, they're they're really quite something. I, I really like how everything's so like harmonious together, and it it sounds like you guys have uh, a direction for the marketing that you're doing. So great job on that, it, and it really helps to have the support, I guess. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest challenges I did face though initially was right, like I said, my background was stationery, pens, pencils, and then later on, confe- food products, biscuits, chocolates, etc. To transition from that to uh, shoes, I had to do a lot of research, and you know, for anyone who wants right. to learn, I mean, YouTube is a great tool, and then obviously blogs, and then I started talking to the manufacturers, so I did had have the technical know how and 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 uh, understanding. But then mm-hmm. the biggest uh, challenge was, you know, like getting the manufacturing nailed down, selection of materials, like because, uh, like for the outsole, what to, you know, um, put in the insole, what kind of laces to choose, what kind of logo, whether my logo is going to be embroidered or, you know, all of those details. So that was the hard part, figuring it out. But I think I got a very good partner in Mexico, the factory, and then they helped me figure all of those things out. Right. That's that's great. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about your Kickstarter and, and the marketing side of things, but what makes you think that this will be a feasible, uh, type of business? Do you have a business plan? Do you know your next steps? I do. So when we started, so the challenge was not when we were starting. So the challenge was not knowing the cost and having Mm -hmm. to work backwards from the price and, um, like the, my only reference point was, you know, these other brands in that same space selling their selling price, so to speak. Yes. Right. So yes. uh, normally uh, like a sneaker, like a, you can find a sneaker for $30 if you go to Winners Marshalls, right? The Converse sneakers or like the discounted sneakers. But then why why will people buy, say, $100 sneakers, which what I'm selling for or which Vessi or Allbirds, all of these companies sell for? So the the perception or, of value or the value had to be in the materials that we use. So yes. can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the value would have been the materials we use. So my strategy was, um, I guess when it started was wise, but my, my approach was choose the best materials initially and then work backwards from there. And that's what we did. And um, as far as the, pricing, the logistics, the business plan. Uh, Like initially at the start, I also went to uh, different institutions for financing. Initially, Mm -hmm. I got uh, rejected. The biggest, uh, what you're showing on the screen on the right hand side, those are the rewards. People can, uh, you know, choose what kind of shoe they buy and then choose that reward accordingly. Yes. So this is how Kickstarter works. So um, as I said, I went to different financial institutions. I even went to BDC and Futurepreneur. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but I got rejected simply for the fact that, you know, um, I had no sales. I had no legitimacy in the eyes of a financial institution because they were like, uh, we don't know if, you know, you'll sell any product at all. And it could all be all for nothing. So the biggest advantage with this uh, Kickstarter that I'm running, in addition to money for the inventory, is the legitimacy I was looking for in the eyes of financial institutions because it's all public out there this page and anyone can go and see how much you've raised or how much you've not raised. Right. Yes. So, uh, and then futurepreneur is a great institution. They have, uh, for, for you to apply to them, they require you to make a business plan, a cash flow statement and all of that. So that was where I, uh, you know, actually sat down and then worked out my costs and business plan. And, you know, what I had in my head, what was feasible, uh, that, that, uh, process of going through the future printed application actually Mm -hmm. uh, basically validated my uh, idea. So where I missed where you did all of this, like who did you sit down with? So there's a foundation called future printer. They work with BDC. (laughs) Yeah. Future printer. They work with BDC. I think it's called business development bank of Canada. So, Mm -hmm. so they run a program for entrepreneurs where, you know, you can go to them if you're, I think, under 40, between 18 Mm -hmm. and 40 years old, you can go to them and, you know, you can present your business plan and to get financing for your business. In fact, one of the group members here who specializes in crowdfunding, Johnny Lowe, uh, he's a friend of Sharky as well. He told me to go to Futurepreneur. So that's how I found found out about them. It's a great initiative. So so they help out people, you know, with who have 
little credit history in my case because I was an immigrant, right? Didn't have that long a credit history as well. So mm-hmm. I went to them, I applied, and then they have the, this whole process where they uh, match you to a mentor. One of their conditions for financing is they match you to a mentor and, uh, you know, they make you go through this rigorous exercise where, you know, they uh, take apart your business plan and see why do you want to do this, do a SWOT analysis, who are your competitors, all of that. And then a cash flow state, a two-year cash flow statement where you forecast, you know, how much are you going to do? So yeah. I went through that program and that all that really helped me, uh, you know, uh, figure out the costs and ultimately do the Kickstarter. That's great. So at this point, given the fact that you have a business plan and you've thought all of these steps through, do you see, do you foresee any risks with this business? I mean, you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic as well, and uh, that may uh, that may affect people's like um, disposable income, or you know, we we don't know what's going on so far. So, but, you know, the, but those are some of the things to consider too, I guess, uh, when you're first starting in the middle of a pandemic. Just walk us through your thought process. Yeah, so when I started, I started working on this uh, in April. That was like slam in the middle of the pan- pandemic. And I'm working full time um, at, uh, I, at, I work at Nestle and then we sell ice cream. So we saw that spike where everyone was first to forced to work from home. And, you know, that insane demand for food products and everything just running out of the shelves. So uh, during that, I decided to, uh, you know, launch my business and then, when I was doing organic marketing or even running Facebook ads just for the build up of a launch and uh, like the people who signed up to be alerted when my Kickstarter launches, my followers, like mm-hmm. some of them simply emailed me and they said, look, we love your product. We can't, uh, you know, but we can't afford uh, buying shoes right now because we were laid off or, you know, we we're on a budget or whatever those reasons. So it was tough. And it, I think right now, even like the rate, even though it's getting better with the vaccinations and all, but I had to face delays because, you know, the factory in Mexico, it was operating at uh, 30% capacity and that uh, delayed the launch and everything. And potentially if there is a, I don't know, I I can't keep track. It's a fourth or fifth wave now for COVID, but whatever wave it is, um, yeah, that can impact the manufacturing as well, as well as the October timeline, which I'm, you know, promising my followers to deliver their shoes to them. Okay, but uh, aside from the pandemic, any other risks that you might anticipate? Delays, perhaps, with uh, with shipments or from your manufacturer? What could go wrong? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Lots of things could go wrong because the cactus leather that, again, it's sourced from Mexico. So, so the advantage that I have is most 90% of the products are sourced in Mexico, like the raw materials are sourced in Me- Mexico. Uh, but then like they might, because uh, they're also seeing a shortage. Uh, we are uh, seeing uh, delays of shipments. The hemp that, hang on. So this sneaker, the hemp sneaker that I have. So this hemp, it's grown in China because it wasn't exactly legal. In sorry, we can't hear you properly. Uh, oh, better yeah. now? Much better. Yes. Okay, sorry. So uh, this sneaker is made out of hemp and this hemp is grown in China. Because again, of restrictions for hemp in you know the U.S. and Canada, so China has become a big market for hemp. Yes. So the so with the shipping delays, uh, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a global container shortage, believe it or not. So, mm-hmm. like, um, uh, in addition to the product various product shortages, there's a container shortage in the sense that containers are sitting in you know the shipment yards of the U.S., U.K., Europe, and the, the, the manufacturers in China, they ha- they don't have containers to ship products in. And then the wow. ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, that delayed, that uh, complicated the situation further because there's a backlog there. Right. So, so probably one of the risks would be that, you know, me not getting enough raw material, like the raw material in Mexico in the factory to manufacture, which can cause delays or, uh, of course, uh, there, there, are, there could be manufacturing delays. There could be issues with tooling i mean there's a whole laundry list of you know what could go wrong uh, so yeah but the biggest threat i guess f- f- right now facing would uh, us would be uh, the covid lockdown if mm-hmm. it happens again and secondly the container shortage 
but i guess i would i would i'm lucky in the second sense because it's going to come from mexico so there's no uh sea involved so it's all going to come by land okay okay well at, at least you've thought it through <laughs> Um let's talk about pricing a little bit here. So the shoes after they arrive here, uh you know, you're you're putting all these prices for early bird uh like people who are essentially going to support you firsthand. Um but and let's let's take a look at that mm-hmm. just really quickly. So what am I getting for $98 right now? <laughs> so for $98 you get the hemp sneaker the black one in the picture on the left so that's what mm-hmm. you get for $98 and then that's uh 27% of uh, 30% off of uh, what the planned price would be which okay. is 110 US so 1130 Canadian Oh I see so the regular prices are listed here as well Yeah yeah so it's oh, all listed cool. there and then you get um free shipping as well on top mm-hmm. of that 30% so there's free shipping uh to the US and Canada not international um and then yeah. and then this is uh, the kickstarter pricing so how kickstarter works is so there's a list of vips who you you know the people who are really excited about your campaign you offer them higher discounts which is the mm-hmm. uh, early bird which was 30% and then the kickstarter price was this this price is the same thing uh mm-hmm. with 20% off but then like okay. during the course of the campaign just to attract more buyers simply because there are four current four uh footwear campaigns on Kickstarter right now yeah i see some running. of them have like uh, only a few left there are only yeah. a few left please rush and and uh, buy some sneakers <laughs> for all of our viewers and for all of our viewers if you have any questions uh for Faizan please go ahead into the comment section leave a comment uh we'll uh we'll monitor the chat uh regularly and we'll uh we'll give you some answers uh for that okay so this is quite interesting um i've i've been a part of some kickstarters but you know i never really like paid too much attention to details and i i have to say the amount of detail you've put in here is more than uh previous uh kickstarters that i've seen So, you know, all all of the photos that you've done, all of uh the information you've added here is all helpful to to see and to excite people about your product. I think that's really important at this point. Okay, so uh let's talk about what comes next for you. Let's say we uh next week you know, you're done with your Kickstarter campaign. What comes after that? So after the Kickstarter campaign um so once it closes a Kickstarter pays out uh, whatever amount you've raised after keeping their share uh mm-hmm. they they pay out their commission they pay out uh it they pay everything out within 2 weeks so if it closes on 1st July so I get the money by the 15th yes and then um during that time frame I am also applying to uh, different financial institutions for uh, additional financing Mm-hmm. as well because now i have the legitimacy to you know um say that i'm a legitimate business and you know this is the money money i raised and you know all of that mm-hmm. so along with that um then go to the manufacturer order the product and in the meantime uh, run an in demand campaign on indiegogo this that's indiegogo is and under uh, crowdfunding platform so what happens is people who uh, go for, uh, like you know people can camp- campaigns that run on kickstarter they transition on to indiegogo uh the difference being that kickstarter it's like a limited amount of time like 30 days 20 days or 60 days whatever uh, and then you can run the indiegogo in demand campaign for however long you like you like it, there's no uh, there's no limit per se time limit mm-hmm. it's just that indiegogo takes a higher percentage of uh, whatever amount was raised so you can direct all of the traffic to indiegogo until you know you set up your for pre orders again until you set up your own shopify or whatever website so it makes so sense to go through kickstarter first and then do indiegogo because you know you're you've essentially um you've hit a goal in let's say 30 days you've raised enough money and uh on top of that you've 
gained maybe some more followers, you've put yourself out there. And I think Kickstarter is one of the more popular platforms to use. Um, it's definitely mentioned more often. Uh, whereas Indiegogo is not, well, it, it's out there, but it's, yeah. No, um, I guess you're it's right. You're, you're right. Kickstarter is the more popular of the two. And then Kickstarter yeah. is well known to people who don't know what crowdfunding is, but they've heard of Kickstarter. Exactly. Indiegogo is more specialized. Um, but then again, it depends on the kind of project. I mean, something to do with tech, if you're mm -hmm. launching like, you know, wearables or headphones or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so people launch on Indiegogo and then they transition to an in-demand campaign on Indiegogo only. So they do like I a 30 day uh, pro, you know, campaign on Indiegogo and then tra they transition. But for footwear campaigns, my particular category, Kickstarter is, uh, is better because it's, it's, again, it's got a larger audience, yes. first of all. And secondly, uh, you know, more people have heard of it. So the chances of, uh, you know, you doing well on Indiegogo versus Kickstarter for my category, Kickstarter is better. And then it's worth paying the higher percentage to Indiegogo when running an in-demand campaign over there. Okay. Um, so how do you plan on distributing the product after you've attained it? Oh, so there's a whole bunch of challenges before the product even gets here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just love your reaction because you're like, oh, there's so much to do. <laughs> but I'm doing it and I'm loving it and I'm excited about it. Honestly, okay. like every new task that comes up seems harder than the last. But once it's over, it's like, oh, okay, okay. what's next? <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, so once I get the money, you know, we go to the manufacturer. So it, it's a bit complicated that I just can't give the money to the manufacturer. For instance, this cactus leather supplier, it's a really big company. So I have to send them the money for the cactus raw material so that they send it to the factory. And then the hemp supplier is U.S. based. So they have stock in the U.S. They import from China, but they have stock in the U.S. So I have to send them money. Then there's the whole challenge of figuring out how to import that to Mexico. And then when that's it, everything gets to the manufacturer. And then, you know, it comes to Canada, figuring out, figuring out the logistics there. And then Canada also has 20% uh, import duty. So figuring out the customs part and then when it comes. So the idea is to uh, rent a warehouse in the GTA somewhere uh, take advantage of you know the cheap shipping rates to the u.s as well as western canada use mm -hmm. uh, canada post or you know one of the u.s based carriers like ups fedex dhl whatever and you know ship out the product and start up start small there uh, like starter operations through through a warehouse okay. that's the idea okay and uh and so for shipping you're just using uh you're using like Canada Post, UPS, nothing, yes. nothing fancy. <laughs> nothing fancy. The, the fancy part is the getting the stuff from Mexico to here. Uh, the, the, the freight forwarders, uh, at either UPS or whatever the local uh, companies are, there's Livingston. There's a bunch of stuff I need to figure out how to get the product from Mexico to here. To be honest, yeah. I haven't done that yet. I'll cross that bridge later. But um, yeah. As far as shipping goes, that that's the standard practice. And I have the advantage of working at UPS as well. I, I worked there for eight months. So okay. I'm very familiar okay. with the operations there. So, and, so you're you know, familiar with it. Yeah. So, so yeah. for the US, UPS is the best carrier per se for items that are, uh, again, higher in value, not like $20, $30 items, but like $100 plus. So yes. UPS or FedEx is really good for that. And then locally, again, Canada Post is best, the cheapest. Okay. Um, in terms of competing with some of the bigger uh, distributors, such as, you know, the big A, Amazon, uh, who delivers, you know, shoes and other products in a day, within a day, uh, how do you plan on competing with that? Again, uh, Amazon is convenience, first of all. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for somebody to buy um, a, sh a product such as my shoe or like Allbirds, which is uh, the, the reason I keep saying Allbirds is I don't know if you're aware, like they're like the holy grail in sustainability companies. They started in 2015 and now they're a billion dollar startup that's working with Adidas mm -hmm. uh, doing partnership. So some for somebody that, you know, wants to purchase Allbirds or uh, yeah, again, Malcree, 
So they they won't normally go to Amazon. They will go to uh, like our website, our Shopify store. And then uh, the idea is not to compete with Amazon. On the <clears throat> the idea is uh, once I get big enough to actually ship our product to Amazon and uh, you know sell on that channel as well, because fifty percent of all e-commerce sales go through Amazon in the U.S. So so there's no point in fighting it. You can join them in that sense. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I, I guess you uh, you're solving a problem with your product. You're uh, you're putting sustainability forward. So you know you can't say that it would be comparing apples to apples if we're comparing it with a product from Amazon. So. Yeah, it's a specialized product, and then Amazon mm-hmm. has lots of. I mean, you'll find lots of sneakers on Amazon. Uh, brand names as well as you know resellers like finding Nike for sixty dollars and selling it for hundred. You'll, you'll find all sorts of stuff there. But then for specialized products, uh, specialized small brands like mine, you won't find them on Amazon unless I list them myself, and which I would love to do on the first day. But then it, it's an issue of capital because Amazon operates in two ways. There's fulfillment by Amazon or FBA, where you basically send the stuff to Amazon and it takes care of the shipping and everything. And the second is FBM fulfilled by merchant. Whereas if mm-hmm. I receive an order, somebody orders on Amazon, then I am responsible for uh, you know shipping, packing, and sending the product to uh, the customer, the Amazon customer. I see. Um, another question comes to mind in terms of uh, you know, you know this is an idea that you came up with. I mean, it's something that. Um, I guess someone in the world may have done before, but this is your product, right? So have you looked into maybe having it uh, patented? Um, I wish. <laughs> uh, there's, <laughs> there, there's nothing to patent in the sense that I don't own any technology per se. For mm-hmm. instance, the cactus leather um Manufactured, they're also selling to Fossil. Fossil, uh, the brand, they, they came out with cactus leather purses. And, yeah. you know, other brands can basically that. come out with, yeah. <laughs> so other brands can come out with, uh, you know, uh, cactus leather shoes themselves. But so far, uh, none of the US brands are. I think there's only one who, who has come out with it so far. So I have the, there's the advantage of being the first mover for that. Mm-hmm. Um, as, as far as hemp goes, uh, because it was taboo until I think five years ago, and then it's still developing. Big brands such as Levi's they sell hemp jeans now. Uh, yeah. So, and then there's this one other company called Eight Thousand Kicks. They were called Dope Kicks first. They ran a Kickstarter campaign as well. So they make hemp shoes, but they hemp trainers, but they're waterproof. Like they're they're a different style, and then their their whole selling point is that you know the, the shoes are waterproof. Uh, my sneakers are not, so it's a different style of shoe. They're mm-hmm. already doing that. So there's nothing to trademark. It's all about, you know, coming up with a product and like having your own story or your own spin on that product with, uh, you know, the sustainability um, values or the sustainability angle in mind. And that's how you differentiate yourself with competitors and then use tactics such as influencer marketing, putting yourself out there with influencers and, you know, all of that, gaining publicity. That's how, that's the strategy in a nutshell on how to, how I plan to grow the business. Okay, that sounds good. Um, So moving forward, uh, meaning after you've, let's say after you've managed to figure out how to get the product from Mexico to here, and after you've uh, actually started distributing the product, moving forward from that point on, do you think you'll focus on mass production or um will will you look into uh different styles of shoes or putting your own spin on it uh do you think it's worth it to um do you think it's more worth it to mass produce what you already have or it's more worth it to specialize and and put a twist on it on the product that you already have i think uh, in terms of growth again um there are there are two brands who do uh, both things. There's this one brand uh, that doesn't do mass produce. Like you have to pre-order. Like you order mm-hmm. a product. It's called Ace Marks. Like you order a shoe, it they, they 
take that order to the factory and then they made it make it and then they deliver it to you so it's handmade leather shoes but then that's again that's a very niche market like i assume if you want shoes if you want to like some customers reached out to me like they have a wedding in you know august they want the white sneaker will they get it in time i was like no you won't you'll get it in october so 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 the so the need or the desire to buy something like a shoe you want it now you want it yesterday right that's like true you don't want to wait for 3 months although that's a good strategy not saying it isn't but for me uh, i think mass production and then um like being being able to fulfill that order and getting the shoes in the on the feet of uh, customers um the next year ideally after 3 to 4 days that's the um, that's the goal for me and that's the strategy moving forward yes i do plan to diversify into colors right now i only have a black hem sneaker why can't why can't i have a yellow sneaker like a yellow sunshine yellow hem sneaker and you know like i develop a whole range uh, along those lines and then um, develop more boots like a, a chelsea boot um a boot with zips um so yeah and more colors of course and then you know have stock uh- I I see that some of them are water resistant. They're not waterproof, but they're water resistant, right? Yes, so the cactus leather is uh water uh mm-hmm. I would I would call it waterproof, but uh, the reason we're saying water resistant is because simply how this boot is designed. It's the chaka boot. Mm-hmm. It's meant for like dressier uh dressier outings, you know, where you can like transition from like on the road where there's slush to like a nice restaurant. or something like that yes. not having to worry about rain or stains so that's it, why it's not heavy duty like if no. you were to wear like some hunter boots for instance no no like if you, yeah. you put your feet in the water i don't think the the leather would spoil but it it's all about the construction it's not just about the material for instance uh, yeah, this is about the stitching yeah, around the, the stitching and, around whether it's water so it's not designed to be waterproof mm-hmm. to be honest but then this material i've been impressed with this material and then the it can be so the next um yeah. the next objective is to create a waterproof boot that's probably another kickstarter we're talking about but right now <laughs> um right, like the material is really good like it does not stain i was very impressed uh, with it when i was testing it out uh, the first snow we had in mississauga in november i went out yeah. and you know there was like salt sprinkled on the snow i stood uh, you know ankle deep in the snow and everything uh, you know jumped in salt puddles came back and uh, just wiped it with a damp cloth and it was completely fine and the boots that i showed you earlier uh, during our our uh, conversation they're the same boots haven't changed so the yeah. material is really really nice okay so when can we expect to see this on the market <laughs> hopefully october so october oh that's so close yeah that's this year yes this i was year. i was thinking maybe i don't know 2025 <laughs> no hopefully in october once we have the material we develop the tooling we buy the raw material it's all about assembling and getting it here so uh, if you order on the kickstarter page you again you get a discount for uh, you know supporting us early and then hopefully we'll have uh, mm-hmm. the shoes for you by october that's the idea that's a 30% discount folks just get on that kickstarter uh uh website right now and support her, support us all right so i don't know what else i i think we covered everything um do you have any questions for me <laughs> or is there anything that you want to say with regards to the product and the journey that you've been on uh again i want to say thank you for having me and then um you know one of the reasons i decided to uh, develop this product and then you know the passion again the passion for creating products and then uh, i tested these products these shoes myself for 6 uh, to 8 months for continuous wear and uh, so you know the the instagram community or the facebook community that i built uh, what i one of the strategies that i used to convince people of this was you know sending them pictures or showing them my used shoes like the the shoes that i have here <laughs> they're dirty shoes yeah. like they're not clean they're dirty mm-hmm. so the yeah. reason for uh, and i think that helped me because like people uh, they love to see real world usage not just you know pretty instagram pictures 
so that was one of the uh, one of the key reasons where I, where I you know where some customers I, I convinced some customers to actually buy the shoes because you know they were seeing real real world usage so i wouldn't wear yeah. anything that wasn't durable and you know if it didn't hold up then i you know we i know that we'd have a problem so that's why so they were designed to um they were designed for durability i actually really like the white color on these and i think it's a uh there's like a white sneaker trend that's going on right now i think that's really relatable to uh, for for some of the uh younger people out there uh so i think you're hitting home with uh, like in terms of style in terms of uh i guess you don't have too many color options yet but you know you're in style it's perfect um for for you know what we need right now um in the fashion world i guess and uh we do have a question for you from our, our audience um and they've asked what is the t what is your long term vision for this company okay yeah i just saw sharky commenting yes so the yeah. long term vision for uh, this company is um so when i launched it i i had so it wasn't with the objective of you know being vegan or you know being sustainable i wanted to make a shoe out of recycled tires that that was the the basic idea in its raw form i wanted to make a shoe out of recycled tires and then during that journey i discovered you know something i i discovered cactus leather i was like oh that sounds cool let's try that and then hemp oh that sounds cool let's try that so so it evolved into being um, like making shoes and all of these shoes are uh, they're vegan completely vegan they're um, like they contain no animal products so i guess that's where that's the direction i want to take the company in uh, like i want to be i want malcree to be synonymous with durable vegan footwear like i going to make boots with um, you know like boots like timberland style uh, chelsea boots all of all of that range dress boots for men uh, flats for sandals for women all of that with vegan with materials such as cactus leather i'm also researching on another um vegan material called hemp uh, hemp leather another plant mm -hmm. based it's it's very exciting so i'm so i'm um you know currently in trials to develop that as well with i'm working with a company uh so yeah so that's the long term vision to be able to make good quality high quality vegan footwear and again develop uh, as i said develop work boots develop uh, sandals all of that okay and right now you're planning on distributing within canada and the us do you think you'd ever take that to an international level so i can ship internationally uh, or, or it's too much headache no no. <laughs> no i can ship internationally that's um that's not a problem but right now the issue with international shipping is again if somebody sitting in i don't know the philippines were to order the shipping cost would be prohibitive for them to order uh the shoes uh right now but actively uh, but hey if somebody from the philippines or you know australia or somewhere else places an order i'm not going to say no but the strategy for the business like the targeted facebook ads or the promo ads all of it will be concentrated to the us and canada market simply because uh that's what we can cater to right now and uh, again mm -hmm. free shipping and all of that but down the line hopefully we can expand to other regions as well by and by expanding i mean like having warehouses there for cheaper shipping and logistics yeah that that makes sense uh that certainly makes sense now if if you were ever uh offered to do like a partnership with a big brand like Nike or Adidas uh would you take that on uh, or would you want to be your own uh little brand and company honestly i haven't thought about that but um so the philosophy so there are two views to this one is you know big corporate like big corporations are evil and you know like support the little guys so so that's one school of thought the second school of thought which um i believe in is hey yeah like there you know um, like cheap working conditions uh, you know poor labor conditions uh, sweatshops all of that but then mm -hmm. even for the sake of appearances if big brands want to improve their working conditions and everything i mean why not like allbirds and adidas is are cooperating 
right? That they're sorry, collaborating. Like they're launching a shoe partnership together. And if that means, you know, a better work environment, like all birds, you know, uh, if they're uh, making the, their shoes in a better working in my work environment, etc. So, I mean, why not? It's a win-win for workers because if volume comes to that small factory, that's them, you know, paying a fair wage to workers. It, it, it's at the end of the day, the workers benefit, right? And of course, Nike or Adidas yeah. or whatever, they gain, you know, positive publicity and mileage. But uh, why not? Okay. My only comeback to that is beware of child labor. We don't want child labor. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. That That's the thing. I mean, you yes. have to maintain, like, stick to the values that you, uh, you know, you, you have presented in the past or, you know, um, projected to your followers or customers. So you have to be in line with those and, you know, act in line with everything. You can't uh, be perceived as a sellout, so to speak. Yes, I, I agree with you. Okay, uh, well, that brings us close to our uh, time for wrapping up. Is there anything else uh, you want to mention? Um, no, I want to thank uh, you, Nagin and Sharky, for arranging this. And to anyone watching, if they want to, you know, uh, support me in any way or like, please share, do share our page if you can. Um, so you never know, like, yes. you know, your your share might lead to a sale for us, and that that again helps us. I'm certainly sold on the white sneakers. I definitely want to give that a try. So. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll support for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no problem. And for all of our viewers, if you ever want to uh, apply to be showcased or featured on one of our Spotlight events, um, you can go to es1.ca slash apply spotlight. As well, we have a monthly event called the Connect event. Uh, you can go to es1.ca slash events uh to apply for that one and uh with that being said i'm going to wrap it up now uh, thank you so much Faizan, for being with us today we learned lots from you hopefully everyone in the audience can benefit from all the great nuggets that you had to share with us today thank you Nagin. thank you for being with us. thank you have a great night as well bye okay bye Thank great you so job. much. It's great. Yeah, those those sneakers look so good. I'm sold on the product. I definitely want one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for being here, staying with me patiently through the whole hour, and we didn't quite hit seven o'clock, but I think. Sharky will be okay with that. <laughs> He'll have to be okay with that. I ran out of questions and you did such a great job of like answering and hitting all the points. So thank you for that. Um, all right. I'll, I'll let you go. <laughs> uh, uh, 